I'm going to tell you a story. But first of all, I'd like you to join with me in a storytelling chant. Now, storytelling chants start stories all over the world. Different cultures have their own chant. This is a mixture of a few. To start off with, all you have to do is to say the word right whenever I pause. Right. right. Let's give it a go. Right. I'm going to tell you a story. Right. It's full of truth. Right. But it's also full of lies. Right. It doesn't really mean, it doesn't really mean that absolutely everything I tell you is true. Right. A story, a story. Let it come, but you've got to remember with a story to let it go. Right. If it be sweet or maybe not so sweet, you keep some for yourself, right. share some with someone else, because there's no point to a story if you don't share it, right. and let some come back to me. Right. And now we're going to do the Crick Crack. Now the Crick Crack is a storytelling chant from Haiti. They still tell stories all night long. I say Crick, you say Crack. I say crick, you say crack. We build up the energy, and then, when we're ready for the story to begin, I say peace, and you say understanding. I say honour, and you say respect, because they're the four rules of the story space. Peace and understanding, honour and respect. Let's give this a go too. Crick. 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 Peace. Honour. Respect. Anansi. Anansi the spider. Part man, part woman. Hangs on a golden thread somewhere between heaven and earth. Now one day Anansi, he decided that he would like to collect all the common sense in the world. And he would put it in a great calabash. And then Anansi would own that common sense. <laughs> and if anyone ever wanted any advice, they would have to ask him. And he would make a lot of money. And when Anansi got all that common sense, he'd put it in his calabash at the top of the tallest tree. So Anansi went around collecting common sense. He went way up north, collected and collected, put it in the calabash. He went to the east. He found lots of wisdom and some common sense, put it in the calabash. He went to the west, found lots of information, lots of knowledge, some common sense, put it in the calabash and way down south. And when he had found all the common sense that he could, Anansi put the stopper in the calabash. And then he tied a rope around the neck and he tied the two ends of the rope around his neck. And he began to climb up that tallest tree. The calabash was resting against his belly. Well, after a while, he got about a third of the way up the tree. But every time he tried to climb, the calabash would hit him on the belly and he'd slip back down. But Anansi was determined. And so up and up and up, it took a long time. And after some hours, he was about halfway up the tree. He'd climb, he'd climb, the calabash had hit him on the belly and he'd slide back down. It was very frustrating. And then Anansi heard someone call his name. Anansi! And he looked down. And there on the ground was a small boy. What is it? Can't you see I'm busy? But Anansi, I was just thinking, if you want to take that calabash to the top of the tree, you should tie it on your back. Then you wouldn't slip all the time. And when Anansi heard that, piece of common sense, after he'd collected what he thought was all the common sense, coming from the mouth of a small boy in his own village, he dropped the calabash and it fell all the way to earth and smashed. And the wind picked up all that common sense and it took it to all the corners of the world. That way everyone got some. No one had it all. Anansi made it happen that way. And this is the way we finish stories. And that is the end of that. And that is the end of that. You know, long ago, way, way back, wisdom was captured in a folk tale, and that folk tale kept it safe. But it only came free when someone told the story. That's the way it is with stories. Long ago, Stories told us who we were and where we came from, 
and what we could do and even where we might be able to go. Those stories are folk tales. Now, folk tales have never beaten around the bush. They've always been about the things that happen in our lives. Being poor, feeling abandoned, feeling all alone, having luck, <laughs> wanting to have three wishes. But you know, some of those stories, they tell the truth. And some of them, the truth would be hidden. But one thing you could always be sure of with a story is that it would change. Now why is that? Why do stories change every time you tell them? That's because when you have a story that's told, a story that goes mouth to ear, we make the visuals ourselves inside our own head. Now some of those visuals we share. <laughs> They'll be what a classroom was like in Queensland in the 70s or 80s. They'll be a chocolate wrapper. They'll be artworks. They'll be the movie version of Snow White. But the way they're put together is unique in everyone. So you all hear the story of Anansi. You hear the same words, but you all have a different picture in your head of what the tree might look like, of what Anansi would look like, hanging on his golden thread halfway between heaven and earth, and of what the village is like. And it's because those visuals are unique to us that story is so powerful. Now, stories around all around. You can see stories at the movies. You can play them on the games. You can see them in books and artworks. Everyone is placing their mark on the world, telling the world their story. But the story that's told, the story that's told from mouth to ear, that story is about connection. And that story will always change. So you might think, how is it that an old story like that could have anything to do with me today? Well, it's because the story always changes that we have the freedom to play with it. We can play quick crack. We can move the story around. We can stretch the story. Something will be added to it. Something will be taken away. But story begets story begets story. And as you tell the story you've heard to someone else who tells it to someone else, it will change just that little bit. And it's because of that change that we can use story in the way that it's always been used to address the things that are happening in our community. Now, when I work with story, I work as an old storyteller did, or I like to think I did, <laughs> I do. I listen to what's happening. I listen to what's happening in my community. And then the storyteller will go away and weave that into a story and bring it back and feed it back. And everyone will listen, they'll make their own pictures, they'll think about the way story works, and they'll go and tell the story to someone else. They'll tell it to someone else, they'll tell it to someone else. And so the story will do the work that story does, moving all around in the community. So when I say I work with story as my methodology, how do I do that? Well, I listen to the stories that are happening. So it might be that I'm working with, as I have for the last seven years in Deception Bay, with families with young children. And we start with all the stories that we know, because I come from a Western European background, the stories that are part of our cultural heritage. And we use nursery rhymes and stories. But mostly it's about connecting. Mostly it's about listening and connecting and starting to feel comfortable and confident with language. Story tells us who we are and where we come from. Story tells us even where we can go. And once you become able to play with language in that way, then you can start changing the story and stretching the story. I worked on a project where I worked with women and children survivors of violence, and my job was the storyteller. So there was three different groups that would run at the one time. One was the group of the mums, one was the group of primary school age children, and one was the group of preschool age children. And I worked between all three groups. There were seven therapists, but my job as storyteller was just to go from place to place, listen to what happened. And so I'd sit for a while in one group and think, ah, this week it's all about who do I belong to? And then I'd go to another group and I'd see where they were. And then in the last half hour, they'd all come together. And while they were together, I would tell them a story that I'd woven. Now, I just didn't pull that story from the ether. 
because I'm lucky. I'm a storyteller. We have all those folk tales that stretch all the way back. And so I could pull a folk tale down and say, this is a story about who I belong to. This is a story about choosing which parent you want to live with. This is a story about stepmothers. This is the right story to tell this afternoon. And so I tell that story to the group, but I wouldn't tell it all the way to the end. I'd only tell it about three quarters of the way through. And then I'd say, what happened next? And so the, parent, the mothers and their children would have to sit and think of a different way for the story to unfold. In story, there are three essential elements. There's the character, which is our self, the setting, which is the circumstance of our life, and then there's the problem. <laughs> if you don't have a problem in a story, it's not very interesting. And it's how the character ourselves interacts with the setting or the circumstances of our life that can lead to solving the problem. Now, not all problems are solved, but in a story, at least you have to address the problem. And so at the end of the session, they think of a different way for the story to unfold. They couldn't wipe out all the things that had happened to them. They couldn't change the violence that might go on. But they could think for a different way for the story to unfold. And so in that group, each week, they'd go away with a different way for the story to unfold. The children soared through the process. The mums, it took them a lot longer. But by the end of the 10 weeks, they had a really different way of finding who they were and where they come from, and definitely a different way of where they could go. So how do you change that process and have it work in a community? Well, the important thing to remember about told stories is that even though they're stories that we uniquely make our own through the pictures in our head, they don't happen alone. <laughs> they happen together. There's no point to a story, as the chant says, unless you share it. And so when you tell a story in a group and only tell it part of the way through and then say, what happened next? You have to think of a different way for the story to unfold. Then people will do what story has always done. They will find a different way for the story to unfold. But of course, the essence of the story stays the same. So all the things about the story might change, but there will always be common sense that will fall to the ground and spread so everyone has it. That's not lost. That's the part of the story that lasts forever. So the story will always change. The story works best when told together. The story can change in the community. And the story is our own creative way of finding our way through and saying we're human. <laughs> we are the folk in folk tales. And this is how the story unfolds. And that is the end of that. <laughs> I'll tell one more story. I'll tell one more story to finish. Quick. Quick. Creek, 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 peace, honour. One day Elephant was walking through the jungle and as he walked he saw Hummingbird lying down on the ground with her feet up in the air. What are you doing, Hummingbird? Oh, said the bird, I've heard the sky is falling and so I'm lying here to hold it up. Hummingbird, you, you're so tiny. How do you think you could possibly hold up the sky? Well, I can't on my own, said Hummingbird. <laughs> but this is what I'm doing. I have to wait for you to join me. And that is the end of that. Thank you.